Hello and welcome to this Python automation tutorial with me, James from Matador Software. And today we're going to be looking at using the Open Weather Map API um, and some Python code to create a program that greets a user, accepts an input for a city, and we'll be able to specify the weather related information that we return. So the Open Weather Map, very simple lots of different weather options which we're actually we can explore within our our python program but very easy to sign up to just go to the openweathermap.org um, website you can sign up for free um, and once you do that you can go into your profile so you can see it and navigate over and look at your api keys and you're offered free api keys that have have a decent amount of ability to call for information um, just on the free platform um, and you will get a key. I will delete this after so you won't be able to use it You'll have to get your own key um, and then we can store that within a variable Within our Python program and we're going to be able to uh, fetch weather information So it's a, it's a really good API to get started with and um, it's a lot simpler than many other APIs that are available and um, this is how we're going to access our, our real world um, live weather information. So the, uh, the IDE or code editor that I'm using is Google Colab. The main reason is because I aim for these videos to be as beginner friendly as possible. I mean, you can just go to the website colab.research.google.com and you can start with an IDE from there. Um, I am importing packages that I've already installed within Google Colab. So if you haven't imported requests, you may need to use pip install um, and you can research that. So pip install um, and whichever library or package you're, you're taking into your Python program. And again, I'm importing in date time. So if you hadn't installed that before, um, you, can, you can do that as well. So the first things we need to import requests because that's how we make a HTTP request to a web page. And that's vital when we're using our APIs. And we need to import date time. And you'll see why that's important later because a lot of the information that we get back, which is JSON um, and, and we take into a Python dictionary is not friendly um, in the sense that it might be made up of seconds and it doesn't mean much unless we convert it. Now that API key we spoke about, we have a variable API key um, and we're just gonna specify that within a string so we can call that later and our base URL, which is just going to be, I'm using version 2.5, you may be using version three, uh, but we have that base URL and we're gonna join this together soon. Um, and, and you will see how this works as we move on through the tutorial. So to make this a bit more intuitive, we want to have a method to greet the user um, when we go to fetch our weather data from our API automatically. So we just have a variable with a greeting. Here we go, we can run it. Welcome to your weather tracker, which city do you want to view? And now we're going to create a method um, where we can input an actual um, city value. So the name of a city. Um, so we've got the input function there and we can just um, ask the user to enter a city name. So there's a couple things to note here as you go ahead and type out this code. If you are a beginner, this may start to look a bit complex, but when I actually run um, this code block, it's going to make a lot more sense. Um, and I chose Google Collaboratory because it's good to break down, like Jupyter Notebooks, things into steps and run them and make sure that your, your program works. And it's easier to segment and it's a bit more readable. You'll notice in our request URL, we store things in an F string. That's what this is called with the F. And it just allows, it's a more elegant way to um, concatenate variables together and format our Python code. So we're taking essentially our request URL is going to be a combination of that API key, the city that we specify um, and the base URL, which is the open weather map site. Um, and then we're looking to get a response using that um, requests package. So then we'll go through that request URL. And now you can see here, I, I'm starting to go through an if statement to basically say, um, if the response status code is equal to 200, which literally means okay, that's an okay request, then we can print the whole data from the open weather map um, API, else we can print some sort of error message for the user. Um, but we're gonna, we're gonna look at this and the data that's produced, and then we're gonna look after this step, a more elegant way to actually request the information we actually want to see. 
So the flow is fairly simple here. We store and print our greeting. The user inputs a city. We send this request to the API. I and mean, if that request is okay, then we can print the data that we fetch from the API. So you see here, um, I've selected London, but the data doesn't come in a very digestible format. We can see we get things like a description of the weather, like broken clouds. Uh, we get temperatures, pressures, and so on, sunset times, but they're in Unix time. And we also get things like time zones, again in Unix. So we need to convert this because, for, for example, we're in Britain, we're going to have an offset like British Standard Time or UTC zero. So we need to account for these things. So now we're going to look at how we can actually fetch the information that we require um, using this um, data that originally came through in JSON format to actually pinpoint what we need to retrieve. So we can actually copy and paste um, a lot of our previous work up until that point where we get the response with the JSON information. Um, and then we can go ahead now and we can create that more um, formatted and digestible information, just the specifics that we want returned um, by access, accessing certain list items um, from the, I guess, the, the code dump that was returned before. Um, but we can pinpoint where we want to go. As you can see, um, we want things like weather descriptions, then it's very easy to specify that because we can break down any dictionary or list objects and use indexes and so on. So we can retrieve a weather variable um, and a temperature um, where before we saw that the temperature needed to be rounded um, so that we can convert it to a Celsius value. And um, so again, we just um, access that um, that information that was listed and we'll just convert it to celsius and now we'll just take two other variables where we want the sunrise and the sunset as well so if you remember and we'll look at this the sunrise time um, was a very large uh, number and typically that's because it usually come in the format of unix time which is the amount of seconds passed since january 1st 1970. And we also had a, an offset that was represented in seconds because we need that time zone offset to differentiate between, say, in Britain, what time zone we're in because we navigate between British summertime um, and UTC standard where we drift an hour um, to the other side. So we need to have some sort of conversion to get this into a digestible format. And you can do the same with sunset. Essentially, we're just um, using the same script, but replacing the, the relevant aspects there. And now we could go ahead and add a bit of text and print those variables that we've created um, with, uh, yes, yeah, some text to make it more digestible. Um, and when the user queries the city, they can get live, accurate information that makes sense. Okay, so we've got our variables and the uh, appending text typed out and an else statement just in case um, we don't get an accurate response code or there's a city name that, that we don't recognize and so on. But you can see here, um, it returns good information. So we get Paris, the summary, the Celsius and the sunrise and sunset times. And we could test this again, type in Manchester, see we get nicely formatted information with time relevant to the time zone we are in. If you want to see me implement this with an actual front end, uh, let me know in the comments. And as usual, feel free to like, comment, subscribe and share. Thank you.